Hello friends, glad to have you back. Welcome to the brand new month of July. Wow, can't believe we're in the seventh month in the year already. When did we say Happy New Year? January was just like yesterday. Okay, hope you're having an amazing day. It's a glorious Sunday, a wonderful Sunday, a beautiful Sunday. Remember, we've been discussing the fruits of the Spirit throughout the month of June, and in July, we'll continue with the series. Okay, so we've discussed about, we've talked about love, joy, peace, patience, and today we're looking at another fruit of the Spirit. Can you have a good guess? Mm. Okay, before we go ahead, let us say a short word of prayer. Eyes closed, everyone. Sweet Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day. We exalt your holy name. Thank you for this wonderful month of July. Be there exalted, be there glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies, O oh Lord. Father Lord, we've come today to learn at your feet. Father Lord, we say more of you and less of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace, O oh Lord, to apply all what we'll be learning in different aspects of our lives in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, walk in through us and give us the grace, O oh Lord, to replicate everything we'll be learning today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. For in Jesus' mighty name, we're afraid. Amen. All right, it's time for praise and worship. Please get your dancing shoes on. Praise God with all your heart. Remember, God inhabits the praises of his people. So every time you have the opportunity, praise him with all your hearts. All right, so I'll see you after this time out.
shout so I can shout hallelujah. I can shout hallelujah. I can shout, shout, shout. So I can shout so I can shout. Welcome back. I yeah, trust you had an amazing time in God's presence. Remember, like I always say, every time you have the opportunity to praise God, do it. Do it with all your heart. It is very important. Okay, so today, I'm sure you've been guessing what was all the space we want to discuss today. Today we're looking at kindness. Yeah, kindness. Do you have an idea what kindness is? Anyone? Are you guessing right? Yeah, I'm sure everyone will have an idea what kindness is. Now, kindness means showing compassion, empathy to everyone, okay? And not just to a particular set of people. Because these days, the kindness we show, or the kindness most people show is transactional. We only show kindness to those who will benefit from. Or we show kindness to people who have, you know, big personalities. Take for example, Dangote or Teodola, or Pastor Sam comes to your school. I'm sure you'll be like, ah, Pastor Sam, see, see that good thing. You'll be so kind, so nice. You can even give your food away, <laughs> you know, because you know them. And of course, you could benefit from them because they decide to show you love. So that is why uh, at the back of your mind, you decide to be kind. But can you replicate that same kind of, um, that same type of kindness to a beggar on the streets? Can you replicate that same type of kindness to uh, your help or to your dad's driver or your mom's driver? That is a real test of kindness. Okay? So if you don't show kindness to people you don't benefit from, that means you are not kind. Your kindness is transactional. 
Okay, so we have a number of people who we have so kind in the Bible. For example, Jesus Christ. I call him the epicenter of kindness. He was kind from the start of his ministry to the end. Even when he was on the cross, he still showed acts of kindness. You know what he did while on the cross when everyone was, was, was persecuting him? You know, the beating and everything. He was bleeding, you know, um, profusely. He was naked, humiliated like a common thief. But you know what he said? He didn't say, ah, Father, see, I came to die for these people's sins. Oh. Punish them, deal with them. No. He said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Wow. <laughs> that is kindness. I call it kindness at its peak. Kindness pro max. <laughs> All right. Look at um, another act of kindness in the Bible. David and Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan. Okay, you normally, um, you know, Jonathan was Saul's um, son, and Saul became an enemy to David. And they, of course, they all died with the war with the Philistines. You know, normally, um, a king who succeeded uh, Saul would have wiped off all the, uh, you know, the family of Saul. But David didn't do that. He was kind to Mephibosheth, and he said, "I will return all your land, and you have a part in this palace." That's a wonderful act of kindness. Okay, now let's look at scriptures. Open your Bibles to Acts 9, 36-41. There's this wonderful story of Tabitha or Dorcas. Okay, she was a believer. You know, so, um, open your Bibles to Acts 9, 36-41. Are you there? Okay, so I'm reading from the Good News Bible. I read, In Joppa, there was a woman named Tabitha who was a believer. Her name in Greek was Dorcas. She spent all her time doing good and helping the poor. At that time, she got sick and died. Her body was washed and laid in a room upstairs. Joppa was not far from Lida. And when the believers in Joppa heard that Peter was in Lida, they sent two men to him with the message, Please hurry and come to us. So Peter got ready and went with them. When he arrived, he was taken to the room upstairs, where all the widows crowded around him, crying and showing him, all the shirts and coats that Dorcas has made while she was alive. Peter put them all out of the room and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Peter reached over and helped her get up. Then he called all the believers, including the widows, and presented her life to them. That is the story of Dorcas, who was a widow. And before she died, she was you know, helping the poor. She was so kind, very kind-hearted. So when she died, we're like, I oh, know, this kind woman can't die like that. No, no. And that's why they reached out to Peter. And Peter, you know, brought her back to life through the power of God. Okay? Now, if she was a wicked person, if she was a heartless person, do you think they would have uh, showed any um, empathy? No, like, ah, see this woman, eh? She has died. She's a wicked woman. Eh? Let her rest in peace. Let her rest in peace. Oh. <laughs> okay. But she was kind-hearted. And they were like, no, this woman can't go. No, she can't go. She can't go. And she was brought back to life. That is it. When you show acts of kindness repeatedly, people will remember you for good. People will love you heartedly, wholeheartedly. I know there are times when people might... Uh, you know, for example, Jesus, he was a kind-hearted person, but he was still hated by people. But you will surely be loved. You will never lack love if you are always showing kindness to all and sundry. Remember that wonderful song? I can't remember the name of the, uh, the artist now, but it's a popular song. You have to show a little kindness, show a little kindness, shine your light for everyone to see. And if you show a little kindness, you overlook the blindness of narrow-minded people in narrow-minded streets. I'm sure you know that song. If my mommy and daddy knows the song. All right, so let's look at um, the ways to show acts of kindness. All right, ways to show acts of kindness. Number one, when you see um, you're in a bus or in a hall and all the seats are taken and you see a pregnant woman or an elderly person, 
What's the best thing to do? You give the person your seat. You're a young person. You're just 10, 11 or 12. You can stand and nothing will happen. And you're still agile and fit. But you see this pregnant woman standing, or this elderly person, and you know they need these seats. You know, you, that's a wonderful act of kindness. You allow them to take your seats. Okay? Now, another act of kindness is when you open the door for your elders or you collect a heavy load from them or you help them with a load. And you just see an elderly person, you are, you know, walking on the road or coming home. Or maybe, for example, your neighbor at home. You see them carrying this heavy load, this heavy luggage. At least you can help them with something. That's a wonderful act of kindness. You lend and a helping hand. Okay, another act of kindness is, you know, offering to lend a helping hand. You see that someone is stressed, you know, maybe in your street you see someone clearing the, the gutter or sweeping the floor. You can ask, okay, Esak, what can I help you with? Okay, so that's a wonderful act of kindness. And again, when um, someone is in need of help. Maybe your friend has not eaten since morning and you know the predicament in their family. And they can be like, okay, um, you've not eaten. Okay, can, we share, can you share my food? I know it's very difficult, but it's a wonderful act of kindness. And trust me, if you replicate kindness in all fronts, that is, you don't show kindness to only those who you benefit from. You show kindness all around to your friends, to your neighbors, to your helps, to your driver, to beggars around your street, or to the less privileged, God will surely reward you. Now, can you do this task? Show an act of kindness every day for the next two weeks. As just if, if, if you want to partake, you can partake, but just show one act of kindness. You can start with your, with your, mom's, your mom or your dad's driver. Say, sir, God bless you. For taking us to school god bless you for your job you know just say a word of prayer or you can even interact with them ah sir how are your children doing hope you're doing fine you know how's work been hope you're not stressed out doing the assistance in one area or the other okay this as an act of kindness then the next day you can replicate that kindness to your help say ah please ma what should i help you with and the dishes too uh, too much for you. Let me okay. Let me assist you. Okay, don't worry. I will sweep the sitting room. You can relax. Do other activities. <laughs> okay, some of you are laughing, are smiling. <laughs> but see, it pays to be kind. It pays to be kind. Then the next day you can, you know, um, one of your friends in school. You can ask them, Ah, how are you doing? I see that you don't bring food to school. And if others are buying food during break time, you just sit down. What's happening? How's mommy and daddy? How are they faring? You know, just, just do something nice. Do something nice. Be kind. Be kind-hearted. Okay, be kind-hearted. It pays to be kind. When you're always kind, God will surely reward you. Uh, moving forward, like I said, it pays to be kind. You know, kindness is one of the fruits of the Spirit you should always imbibe in you. Now, if you're not kind, if you're not naturally kind, please, Try to be kind. <laughs> Try to be kind. Try to be kind. Uh, some of you are laughing. You're like, uh, Uncle, I beg. Um, it's not, if, you, if you show kindness to people, people they will um, exploit you. They will take you for granted. But still show kindness anyways. It doesn't matter. Okay? You assure me you will do one act of kindness for the next two weeks. Are you assuring me? Mm, I trust you. All right, so um, now the thing is, for you to be kind, for you to imbibe all this fruit of the Spirit we've been talking about, from love to joy to peace, patience, and now kindness, you have to have the mind of Christ. And you can't have the mind of Christ if you are not born again. Mm -mm. See, you can be morally upright too, but see, having the mind of Christ or being a born again Christian, <laughs> makes you a unique person in all spheres. A unique in all spheres. So please, if you don't give your life to Christ, this is a wonderful opportunity. Or if you say, ah, uh, I go to church every Sunday. Mommy brings me to church every Sunday. I attend midweek service. Mm -mm. 
being a true Christian means you have to be very intentional. Okay? So this is a wonderful opportunity. The best decision you'll make in your life. So if you want to give your life to Christ, eyes closed, put your hands on your chest. Okay, and just say this word of prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I admit that I'm a sinner. Father, Lord, wash me on my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Thank you, Lord, Father, for accepting me into your fold. Make me part and parcel of your kingdom. Father, Lord, give me the grace not to derail from your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me. Be there exalted, be there glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Okay, let me just say a short word of prayer with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for your wonderful children. Thank you for the privilege, O oh Lord, to be in your presence. Thank you for accepting them. Thank you for, for blotting out all their iniquities. Be there exalted, be there glorified in Jesus' name. Father, the grace, O oh Lord, not to derail from your presence. The grace to always stay steadfast in you. Grant unto them, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. See, a big congratulations to you all. You've made the most important decision in your life. There's a big party going on in heaven. Heaven is rejoicing for your sake. We've come to the end of yet another wonderful topic. But before then, let's take our memory verse. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Galatians 5, 22-23. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Okay, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Okay, I take it again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Okay, before we say our byes, let us say a short closing prayer. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for giving us the grace to learn about kindness. Father, the grace to be kind in all spheres. Grant unto us, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, we thank you, Lord, for yet another beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, for this week. This, our week is blessed in Jesus' name. Anything we lay our hands to do this week will be wonderful in the mighty name of Jesus. For those of us who are you know, already preparing for examinations this month, grant unto us, O Lord, good success in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, my wonderful friends, on this powerful note, we've come to the end of today's service. So, as you go into the new week, be kind. Like I said, share an act of kindness every day for the next two weeks. Okay, so stay out of trouble, be nice, okay, be friendly, enjoy your week. For those preparing for exams, you know, um, read your books properly, okay. All right, so have a wonderful week, everyone. I will see you next week. So for now, it's a bye from me. Bye-bye.